So we come to the Times Brands Media Award for Emerging Leadership in Journalism, which is given to an outstanding young journalist who possesses an impressive and commendable track record in his or her professional performance, who has shown fidelity to the journalism code of ethics, has used the tools of media in fresh and innovative ways, and has displayed courage in speaking the truth about issues involving peace, social justice, and the integrity of creation. We would now like to introduce this year's recipient of the Titus Ransma Award for Emerging Leadership in Journalism. Raymond Villanueva is the director for radio of Codal Productions Incorporated, an award-winning multimedia radio and production group. Known for his passion as a journalist and a storyteller, Villanueva has produced articles on peace and conflict, disasters, human rights, social justice, among other issues, in Bulatblad.com and other media outlets. His mo most notable works include a story on the massacre of Abila and family and a photo essay on the Banwaon children of Bali. While he has faced many threats and challenges in the conduct of his profession, Mr. Villanueva has a pragmatic view of his work as a journalist and always reminds his students and fellow media practitioners never to disregard the importance of safety measures in performing one's duty. In a previous interview, he said, and I quote, in all of this, I am happy and still alive. I have every intention to stay this way for some more decades. Because no story, no photograph, no film, no broadcast is worth dying for. End of quote. And indeed, in the service of the public good, courage and common sense work better hand in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is awardee for emerging leadership in journalism, Mr. Raymond Villanueva. Thank you very much, Titus Bransma Award, Philippines Board, and the Order of Carmelites for this affirmation. I'm much honored to be one of 2015's awardees. More so as we observe the year of the poor. I started as a campus journalist, but this work really began sometime in 1993 when I volunteered to be the photo documenter of a human rights fighting mission in Paco Valley, part of the notorious Tri Valley complex in what is now Palinka province. I thought I knew what I came to do as I could take photographs and I could write. Little did I know then that my real education was about to start. Of the more than 50 families that were residents of this remote village, only 12 were left. The rest were either ev evacuated or were killed by the Philippine Army. I photographed abandoned huts and farms. I photographed bullet shells clustered, clustered around skeletons of caravans. I interviewed Indian children who could only sing about the bloodthirsty soldiers but could not bring themselves to talk about them. Later, I had to pilot a hastily built bamboo raft so we could outrun a platoon of scout rangers based in Connor Town who were hot on our heels. <coughs> I repeatedly crashed our raft against huge boulders in the middle of a raging river, and all but one of my film rolls were lost. The photos that emerged from that single roll were used by human rights organizations to tell more stories about an indigenous tribe who to this day suffer from military atrocities. Whenever I am asked how I started to be an alternative journalist, photographer, and broadcaster, I look back at this human rights mission as my starting point. After serving my term as Vice President of the College Editors Guild of the Philippines, I became a broadcaster, teacher's rights advocate, a business reporter, a human rights defender, a peace talks worker. When progressive multimedia outfits were being established at the turn of the millennium, I grabbed at the opportunity to do what I've committed myself to do while piloting that bamboo raft on a rampaging river. A river that may just as well be the cumulative tears of the poor and marginalized in our beloved and terrible country. Since then, I've participated in missions and reported on the Maguindanao Massacre, the Capion Massacre, the Burgos, Catapan, Empeño, Merino, Rubinos, Patralo, Manalo, the Sapresitas cases, 
the Lumet massacres and the forced evacuations, the Manila Bayans, election killings, and many others. For this, we have been ragtagged and charged with rebellion by the armed forces of the Philippines, and our radio programs have been discontinued. Our alternative media outfits have been vilified and attacked. All these are scary reasons to be a journalist, but I could not find better justifications to be one. So I persist. But in the many years that I have been reporting on and for the poor and marginalized, I could not yet claim that I suffer as much as they do. I then often ask, who should tell the stories of the poor and the downtrodden? I believe they should. The poor and the marginalized must themselves be their own voices. We are now committed to help, helping them claim their communication rights. They own the memories and the stories they, more than anyone else, should be the ones to tell them. So we helped in the establishment of the peasant-led community radio station, Radio Cagayano, in 2006. The Philippine Army burned it down two, two months into their broadcast. In 2012, we helped in the establishment of Radio Sagada, the first and only indigenous people's community radio station in the country. We are now establishing an urban poor disaster risk reduction radio station here in Metro Manila, a women-led DRR radio station in Tacloban, still another IP community radio station in northern Mindanao with the rural missionaries of the Philippines. Plans are underway for yet another DRR radio station in northern Panay, another Yolanda stricken region. We regularly train alternative journalists from poor communities marginalized sectors and neglected provinces all over the Philippines. Even alternative broadcasters among migrant Filipino communities abroad for them to establish their own alternative multimedia outfits and produce their own radio programs. If you notice so-called alternative media outfits being loud, you are hearing the people claiming their communication rights, despite the efforts of the dominant media to make all of us mindless consumers of their often irrelevant brand of news and worldview. The poor and the people at the margins are beginning to be their own voices again. My participation in all this is my work thus far. I am happy that you take notice.